This news update is brought to you by. So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here. It's Monday, March 16th, and welcome to the Bobby This Today Afternoon Update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Painful but necessary. That's how Finance Minister Chris Sinclair today described the government's 19-month fiscal adjustments program. In Tiblin, the estimates of revenue and expenditure for fiscal year 2015-2016, Sinclair boasted that for the first time since 2011, the country was running a fiscal surplus. With the country on the cusp of its 50th anniversary of political independence, he said the homegrown program was concrete evidence that the country can craft workable policies and programs for itself. We have met an extremely ambitious fiscal target in 2014-15 and we are beginning to see this benefit in the foreign exchange market, in the stability of our economy and the resumption of growth. On the other hand, the primary balance is one of the most is one of the best indicators of the current management of a country's fiscal affairs. It compares government revenues for one year to expenditures that are under the government's control during that year. Achieving a zero primary balance is often seen as a critical first step as you seek to restore the financial balance overall in your economy. Sinclair also responded to what he said were unfounded rumors that the government intends to tax gratitudes and pensions in Barbados. He says this is simply the handiwork of purveyors of a mischief. No such policy has been discussed, has been considered, even considered, contemplated or will be attempted by this government at no time. And certainly not when I am Minister of Finance or anybody else in this cabinet. I want to repeat, sir, no such policy was contemplated, discussed or will ever be discussed. Because as far as we are concerned, gratuities, pensions, and so forth form part of the property of the public servants that they should draw fully as they go home for their retirement. And you can check our website at www.bobbylistoday.bb and our Facebook page throughout the day for more on the estimates. Meantime, an international economic expert says there are no quick fixes for the island's economic situation. However, Dr. Peter Blair Henry, Dean of the Howard Stern School of Business, believes that Barbados can get out of its tough financial situation. But he says to do so, government must make tough decisions. There, there are no easy fixes to get to the right place. So if you want to call it discipline, Long road draw sweat, short foot draw blood. Um, governments have to be willing to make decisions today that will not bear fruit for some time. Even if it means, and this, I understand this runs counter to what many people's understanding of democracy because you're, you're, a, you're an elected official. And so if you use something today which is unpopular, you may, you may stand the chance of losing the election. But that's what's required to deliver prosperity. Um, and the most effective leaders are those who are able to communicate those, uh, those kinds of decisions. In other news now, a senior tourism executive is hoping that the eventual owner of Royal West Moorland Resort does not change the way it operates. Execu executive Vice President of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Sue Springer, says once the operations remain the same, the sale shouldn't have any negative impact on the tourism sector. No, I don't think it sends that message because uh, the gentleman that owns it has stated that he is at a crossroads and he wants to um, stay closer to home. There has been a flux regarding um, real estate sales uh, over the, few, the last few years, which we're all aware of, but we're now beginning to see that move a little bit more. 
Um, and so I don't believe that it is a negative. After 27 years of service, the Barbados Light and Power Company is closing its customer service offices on Bay Street and Probin Street. The closure takes effect on Friday, March 27. The company says the decision is part of a wider plan to streamline operations and provide a better service opportunities for its customers. But alternatives will be put in place to accommodate customers during this transition. BLNP's customer services manager, Rohan Seal, said the company will also be rolling out a range of new services to cater to those customers who wish to transact business via the internet. There's regional and international news after this short break. Regionally in Jamaica, an ongoing fire at the Riverton landfill is causing major headaches for residents and officials. According to health officials, over 600 people flocked to hospitals and healthcare centers in the Kingston metropolitan region over the weekend. Sections of the Riverton city disposal site have been on fire since last Wednesday, and it's still not clear when the fire will be extinguished. The result? Hundreds of persons turning up at public health facilities with respiratory problems. On Friday alone, Health facilities attended to 345 persons experiencing respiratory problems due to the fire. On Saturday, 233, and up to midday today, 64 persons were treated. Four persons have since been admitted. Additional supplies and equipment have also been provided by the Ministry of Health to its main hospitals. This includes nebulizers, humidifiers, and pharmaceuticals to deal with persons with respiratory symptoms and the main facilities that the supplies and equipment were deployed to are the Kingston Public Hospital, Spanish Town Hospital, Bustamante Hospital for Children, and the University Hospital of the West Indies. On the international scene, the president of Vanuatu appeals for international help for his country after Cyclone Palm tore through over the weekend, killing eight people. According to the president, Baldwin Lonesdale, his country now has to rebuild after the storm wiped out all recent development made over the years. What seems to have been avoided is a very big storm surge coming in from the sea, which in previous sort of typhoons, cyclones, has proved absolutely deadly. It doesn't seem like they had that here, and that's one of the reasons why it seems the loss of life around Port Vila is relatively low. The big fear though is for the more remote islands, some of which remain uncontactable and when aid agencies get out there, I think there are fears that the death toll could rise. At the moment, we just don't know. What people need here is shelter. Many people who were living in this village were taken to evacuation centres. What they also are saying they need soon is food. People are saying, look, we're okay at the moment, but in a week or two, food supplies are going to be running low. And that's the Barbados Afternoon Updates, but you can join us again this evening. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadastoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 Online TV, as well as Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Frenella Wedderburn, to have a wonderful day. This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy.